So I'd like to hand over, we're very honored to have John Teddy here, who's one of the world's leading graphics analysts, and he's going to give us a wider perspective on why these open APIs are important to the industry. Well, good morning, and uh, let me uh, repeat what uh, Neil said about thank you for coming out on Saturday. I don't know how the uh, passion is in China with regard to Saturdays, but it's difficult to get a group of people like you together on Saturday in the United States, so we really appreciate it. As Neil said, we're a market research firm. Uh, we measure things, we count how many chips are shipped and how many programs are sold, and we test things, and we also advise the uh, industry the manufacturers, the software and hardware suppliers, and the investors on uh, the market and try to do a little uh, future predicting on it as well. So the, uh, the story I want to tell you is about Cronus. The, the, the name Cronus comes from Greek mythology. It's actually, it's a kind of a modification of the name of Cronus, the god of time. And uh, the organization Cronus is all about time. It uh, recognizes that uh, time is not on your side. If you're a hardware or a software, Developer, <laughs> and you, then you have to deal with the issues of time, and uh, the pressure of time is, is incredible because you have competition, and the competition is trying to get to market before you do. They're trying to introduce products perhaps similar to yours, hopefully better, uh, and so you're always in this race uh, for time, against time. And so the temptation when you're doing development work is to take a shortcut, to try and save some time. And the way you would do that is you would not use standards, because standards require you to follow certain rules and regulations, and that, again, takes time. And so many companies have gotten to market this way, by avoiding standards, just doing it their way, trying to get to market, get to market, uh, introduce a product, sometimes they're actually successful, and that's great until they want to do the next generation. And it's the next generation that exposes the weakness in that philosophy and that policy, in that that's when all of the bugs really start to get exposed, because you have to be backward compatible, and if you didn't take the time to do things right, they are going to catch up with you on your next generation product. And that just gets worse and worse and worse as you go along. So the solution to that, of course, is to use the standards. Now, Cronus uh, recognized the need for these standards um, 12 years ago when the organization started. And it took them two years to get the first one uh, developed, which was OpenGLES. Now, OpenGLES was very, very important even 10 years ago. And, and recognizing the issue of time, Cronus said, look, we've got to get this API out, and we've got to get it out in a hurry because the smartphone market uh, is exploding. We can see that it's going to happen. Smartphones are very popular. The cost of processors and processing is coming down. Screen sizes are going to get bigger because the manufacturing cost of LCDs is coming down. And so all of these factors could be easily projected if you just, just using basic Moore's Law. And it was obvious that if there wasn't a good, stable platform of an open standard or some kind of standard, that there would be chaos. And that chaos would prevent the market from actually growing. So um, OpenGL ES was introduced, and it was, it was very, very successful. Now, the other approach to not having an, an open standard is if each and every operating system and each and every processor has its own unique uh, environment. That's very, very hard for the software developer. Uh, if, the, if the application developer picks a platform, then obviously the next thing they want to do is get on the next platform, and the platform after that, and so forth. The difficulty there is that by the time you finish your application for the first processor, and then you start developing for the second processor, by the time you get to the third one, you're obsolete. You've lost track, you've lost time, and you can't catch up. So it's a very, very difficult situation when there are a variety of standards out there. The alternative to that approach is to have multiple development teams, each one doing a particular platform. But that's very, very expensive. So there is no good solution for not having open standards. Now, the fact that Cronus did this uh, and, and did it 10 years ago, 
um, and, and did something that was very, very unusual, open, free standards developed by industry leaders was considered revolutionary at the time and maybe even more crazy. But now, 10 years later, we can see that this not only was the right idea, it was the best idea. And the proof of that is that Cronus now has 15 APIs. Now, these APIs didn't just happen, and they weren't uh, created by a, a team within Cronus who said, oh, let's go build a new API today. We have nothing else to do. These APIs were requested by the industry. The industry came to Cronus and said, look, we need an API to do this, so we need one to do that. And the Cronus organization and its 115 members came together and built uh, these 15 APIs. And as you heard Neil say, even more are coming. But the important thing about this is 15 APIs doing serious, important work requested by industry. That's the proof that the organizational structure and the idea of open free standards really works and really has a place in the industry. And the further proof is that, um, that as I mentioned, Google has adopted this. But it's not just Google. All of the OSs have adopted it. So OpenGL ES, as an example, is now in every OS that's out there. And most of the um, mobile uh, APIs from Cronus are getting into the OSs also. It takes time for them to get in, time again, uh, but nonetheless, they are they are moving in. Now, this is a little story about what happened uh, in the industry, and I hope that chart's visible all the way back, and I hope this little red dot is. Back in 2006, when OpenGLES started to get going, we were shipping already a lot of smartphones, but not all of them were being shipped with OpenGLES compatibility. As time went on, you can see that OpenGLES was adopted more and more and more, and our conservative forecast is that by 2014, 100% of every mobile phone shipped will be uh, equipped with OpenGLES. I think that forecast is too conservative. I think it's actually going to happen probably by the end of this year and certainly by 2014. Now, another example of the importance and value of OpenGLES is that when the tablet market took off in 2009, largely started by uh, Apple, restarted, I should say, by Apple, OpenGLES was in 100% of the tablets from day one. And that's just further proof of how industry has adopted and accepted uh, this API. Now, why are the Cronus APIs that good? And the reason is, is because they are done in possibly the most democratic method that you can imagine. Uh, the members of Cronus, 115 or so companies, uh, elect groups of them for various APIs. Not all 115 companies work on all of the APIs at the same time. So they have working groups for each API. Within the working groups are brought the best engineers that the companies, the member companies, have to work on the particular API they're interested in. These member companies come with a couple of objectives. Number one, they want to make certain that they don't get blocked by any other member through some technology trick that would not make their processor or their software work properly. Secondarily, they also want to make sure that the API is open so that their special things can be used. So they have to come with those two seemingly conflicting points of view. And they work on the APIs very, very hard. They argue like hell all during the meetings. And they resolve all their arguments strictly on the basis of technical merit. No politics. Each member has one vote and only one vote. No company can overwhelm the others. It's a, it is truly a democratic situation. And because it's done by engineers with an engineering point of view, they simply accept the best solution. So the net result is that when the API is released, it is as good a product as you possibly can come out with at that point in time. And, and, and that's one of the reasons why the uh, APIs have been so well accepted and one of the reasons why Cronus has been asked again and again to develop newer and, and uh, more APIs. 
And then best of all, these APIs are free. Now just to emphasize one point that uh, I think Neil made, and I want to re-emphasize it, is that they are free, and they are being used by literally every company in the industry, including all of the Chinese companies. The Chinese companies are using them, but they're not influencing them. So Elizabeth, who has not, she's not here right now, came up with a great idea the other day, that it's as if we were driving in a car together, and Cronus was steering the car and driving it, and the Chinese companies were the passengers. They're just passengers. And what we're here to tell you is we'd like to see the Chinese companies take the steering wheel and be the driver, get involved with Cronus, help create these uh, APIs, and, and, and contribute to them, not just use them. So um, time is marching on. Time is always marching on. And uh, part of time marching on is the industry. The industry, as I mentioned, I showed you those charts about the curves and so forth, is growing like crazy. We all know that. Part of the reason it's growing is because of OpenGLES and the other APIs, because they are enabling <coughs> application developers and OS developers and processor developers to take advantage of this big market. That's the good news. It's also a little bit of the bad news. And the little bit of the bad news is that we need more engineers who know how to write drivers and applications and develop processors to meet these uh, APIs. So Cronus is, <laughs> Cronus is um, uh, here also <coughs> today and in China this week to introduce the idea of Kite. And, and you'll hear more about Kite from other speakers today. But it's basically an educational program that we're trying to get educators in China and other places to uh, teach, <coughs> teach how to develop drivers and other, other uh, aspects of, uh, of the API. I think that's my last slide. Yeah. So we invite you all to come and join Cronus to participate um, and to get involved and maybe you can become a teacher.